First of all, Shalom, should we do it in, in Hebrew? Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> and, and Hebrew and a smattering of Yiddish. <laughs> I, I, I wonder because I, I watched the movie and you see really into the whole Hebrew conversation. Right, I, yeah. Did you understand anything at all? I only under, I understood literally what uh, Yuval Adler and the rest of the cast were filling me in on. Yeah, so I, yes, I don't speak Hebrew. Any Hebrew that I, any Hebrew words I learned were the, the words that they were just telling me what it meant. Because obviously it was important to know what it was they were saying, but my character uh, is English, and I think he, it was written in that he had a slight, um, because he was an outsider, that he had a slight aversion to going full in in Hebrew. So in that way that he understands it, he can speak it, but as he, you know, there's a line where he says people just mock him when he tries to speak Hebrew, so he, he doesn't. You know. so, so that was actually the character from day one. It wasn't like that you tried no, or something. No, no, no. No, to, to be honest, I would, you know, like like a lot of actors, I I would have loved to have tried to learn a bit more of that because you know we like showing off our language skills, <laughs> you know. But um, no, that was always the Thomas was always well. Actually, when I first read it, Thomas was Australian. Um, but then Yuval said there's no reason he shouldn't be English. I, you know, I like what you're bringing, so just make him English. And I think it was, I think for Thomas it was a slight, uh, yes, it was almost like making a point of, I'm not going to speak to you in Hebrew, I'm going to speak, you know, especially where we join him. He's out of, you know, the, the comfort zone of the side. He's not their best friend anymore, and they're not his best friend. So I think it was a slight defiance for him to go, you want me here? Let's speak English. You know. And you know, as, as an actor such as such as yourself, you, you've done major Hollywood, so to speak, movies, and all of a sudden you're engaged in this in these relatively small yes. uh, Israeli-made movies. Yes. Uh, how, how was the connection? Well, um, I mean, to be honest, I do make a lot of small films. <laughs> I, I make a lot of uh, indies, I guess. Um, it was just it was a meeting with Yuval. Yuval. Uh, reached out, and I, I don't suppose I was the only person he was reaching out to, but yeah, he came to my place in London, um, and we spent a couple of hours just talking, you know, my kids were there, they were, my kids were watching telly, and me and Yuval talked about politics and, you know, life and art and all kinds of things, and, uh, and what we liked and what we didn't like. I had read his script by that time, and I thought, yeah, I thought it was interesting, I thought it was interesting, I had seen his film Bethlehem as well, and I thought that was a really good film in that it was not glamorous. It was not. Um, it, it listen. I'm an outsider to that world. I don't know, but it, it it had what I felt was a ring of truth to it, and about actually having. Uh, that wasn't about goodies and baddies. It was about, it was more layered and complex than that, and that's what I liked about uh, the operative as well. I don't want to cause any any troubles. Yeah. But I don't know whether you know the end was actually in as well. Having yeah. some some sort of training, right? Yes. Was that, was that something that interested you? Again, you said that you're outside yeah. of this world. Did yeah. You, did you try to get more and more engaged? Well, I did. I did, but I'm, and I would have loved to have got more. I would have loved to have got more engaged in some of the ways that Diane did, but it it honestly wasn't relevant to to Thomas's character really. Because the more I would ask Yuval about it, because there's you know there's there's a there's a physical confrontation at the end. Where, where Diane's character is being chased, and I have to just get myself in the way of people at this station, and, th and then, I'm, then they take me down because they're trained Mossad people. <laughs> um, and even though I'm Mossad, I I'm not a tough guy. Do you know what I mean? And that was something that Yuval made very clear. Because I said, so are we going to be doing fighting? Is it, am I going to learn fighting? He's like, no, it's just, you're just a guy behind a desk. You're not a field operative who can kick people's ass. You know, you're not doing Krav Maga and like knocking people out. You're just a, a guy, you know. Um, and again, I think because of where Thomas is when we meet him, he feels slightly out of that loop, you know. Um, he's an outsider almost the way that I'm an outsider to it, you know. I mean, obviously he knows way more about this world than I, than I know, but, you know, I spoke, I spoke to people who had been in Mossad um, about what that relationship is between operative and handler. Um, but it wasn't, it was never, like the film itself isn't overtly political, it's not overtly political with a, a big P. We don't really deal with who's right and who's wrong about stuff. It's far more personal than that, and I think just what this work does 
what this work does to people. And really, from Diane's point of view, what kind of person you have to be in order to subsume, is that the right word, yourself into being somebody else. You have to be able to be invisible. And it's, I feel it's more of a character study than a, a, an overtly political film. I think, listen, I think everything is political. I think everything is political, but it's not, you don't come away thinking, oh, the Israelis are the goodies or anyone else is the bad. It's not, it's not really like that. It's, um, it's a far more quiet, personal journey about this woman's, a woman experience of like, trying to find where she fits in, actually. She's not really Jewish. She's not really, you know, like, she's, she's from different places and she wants to find an identity. You know, she's Jewish, but she's not, you know, she's not the full thing. Same with, Thomas, I mean, Thomas is Jewish, but because he's English, yeah, he feels like an outsider because he's not a, a born and brought up Hebrew speaker. And so I think they find them, they find each other and they kind of go, oh, we're, we're both, we both don't quite fit into this world, even though this is a, you know, we are both fighting for this country that is not actually ours, you know. So you're saying, rightly so, the movie's not political, uh, but I know that personally, you're the very political person who said so yourself, and I wonder, working on set, uh, were these subjects ever in conversation? No, yes, it was not, I mean, not, people were not talking overtly about um, the politics of Israel, particularly. Certainly most of the people, um, most of the Israelis on the film, well, all of the Israelis on the film uh, would have had a certain political outlook. You know, and they were clearly not BB fans, you know, um, and that, not that people were being angry about that, but that, that's just, that permeated uh, everything. And I wonder, did it change anything in your perspective, working with an Israeli group, group on the sort of Israeli movie theater mm -hmm. with these subjects? Did you I mean, find yourself going through some sort of a journey? I mean, not really, because I think as an outsider, I... I hope that I have the humility to know that the more people I've spoken to over the years on all sides of every conflict, it's like, well, this is layered and it's, and it's complex. I think your, the reaction that one can have to, to something that's happening in the world when you're 18 can be much more black and white and can be much more knee-jerk and go, I know what I think about that. I absolutely know what I think and here's what I think. Until you meet someone else who goes, yeah, but what about this? And you go, oh, okay, right. So things are just more complicated. So, so I, it didn't really change me from over here to over here. I think, I think by the time I'd done the film, I was old and probably wise and boring enough to go, I don't, you know, I don't know. There is enough about um, Middle Eastern politics that is going to confuse the cleverest people in the world with the best will in the world. So I think with my, with my limited knowledge of it, i.e. I'm not on the ground, you know, it's not like I went, hey, and I really do think Israel is a good, you know, because I, I you know, I, I've kind of felt that about Israel anyway. I'm, I'm fine with Israel. What, I, what I'm critical of is every country doing things that I disagree with. I'm critical of my country when it does something that I don't agree with, you know. I think it's too easy to... Yeah, it's too easy to paint it black and white and stuff. So no, I didn't really have a, I didn't have a, an epiphany about that. Have you actually been to Israel? I no, I haven't. I, I mean, I was hoping to go, I mean, this is one of the, another one of the reasons that I can't go, yes, here's what I think, because I, <laughs> I live there. Um, no, I was hoping to go uh, for the opening in, for the opening in Israel of the film, but I think that's over Christmas. Yeah. And I am going to be here with my family. Which is wonderful. Yes. Even in Israel. Even in Israel, yeah. Well, even in the opening of a film, yeah. yeah. I've got to um, be with my kids. Yeah. But, you know, we, we talked about the, the big budget movies, and we've been a part of some press you know, productions mm -hmm. in, in the recent years. And, you know, a lot of critics are saying that it's becoming more and more, it's becoming harder and harder to make these kinds of indie movies. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious about your perspective about that, to someone who's yeah. actually been a part of both. Well, I suppose it's partly why so many of the, the films that I would have grown up with, those kind of middle level films for grown ups, you know, uh, have 
a lot of them have ceased to exist. So either films are tiny, 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 or huge. And I think where that, that middle has sort of gone, it's often gone to TV, you know. Uh, grown-up stories for grown-ups, where you actually can, it's not, uh, it's not big tentpole movies, but it's not movies that are made for, you know, five dollars, you know, it's, I think that's all, that has definitely changed, it's definitely changed. Uh, but then again, I, I'm not used to getting movies funded, I'm, you know, I'm not one of the unfortunate people <laughs> who has to go in and tries to get 30 million dollars off someone, but um, yeah, from my point of view, I, I've always seen it as the same job, regardless of the size of the production. You know. So I, I don't treat anything differently to the operative than I would in Black Panther or The Hobbit, or you know, because it's this, it's the same job, and, and everybody is doing the same job, just with less catering. <laughs> doing films feels very possible. Working in America feels very possible in a way that it felt like another planet to me in, in the mid '90s. The idea that really you're the likelihood of you're going to America and there being well, this this world where everything is a co-production, especially on television, um, that didn't exist really. You know, so you may as well have been talking about a sort of fantasy world. Whereas now, and of course, that is still the majority of actors have a very hard time and are not working for most of the time. But for those that do, I think there are there feels feels like there's more strands to go into. You're talking about the connection with America two of the shows that actually made it, and I think they were some sort of pioneering the, the mm -hmm. way, the path uh, towards there. It was Sherlock, obviously, and, yeah. and, and The Office. Were you yeah. surprised by that? In I mean, I was delighted by it. I, th I think we were all gratified by the extent of it. So yeah, yeah, I was surprised. Yeah, definitely. I mean, especially with Sherlock, because that was an immediate hit on both sides of the Atlantic. And, uh, in a way that uh, like The Office was a hit in, in the business in America, but there are still millions and millions and millions of Americans who have never seen the UK office. But, um, yeah, Sherlock hit very big, very quickly. Uh, and I think that took us all by surprise, the extent of that. Okay, one final question. Would we see you ever doing some more Israeli productions, maybe in Hebrew next time? I would, listen, I would love to. If I had an excuse to learn Hebrew, I would take it up with both hands, yeah. And, I want, and I'd like to film that, you know, I'd like to actually be there, to be honest. I had a great time. It's one of the funniest kind of productions I have done ever, probably. For the, the, the Israeli cast and crew were, I laughed a lot. I laughed a lot. It's like, you know, you get that many sort of laughs in, in a day, and I, I'm, I'm always up for that. So, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do an Israeli film again, hopefully this time in Israel. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, and, uh,